welcome back to Fantasy Goldfish Fanatics. Today I'm going to be telling you my top five medications I keep on hand for my fancy goldfish. We're going to be going through each of the five different medications and then towards the end of the video I'm going to give you a few extra standout medications or treatments that I always like to carry with me. But before that let's head over to the super simple budget aquarium and check it out. As you can see behind me we have the super simple budget aquarium. Now I have done two episodes on this one previously purchasing all of the equipment for it and then setting it up. As you can see we have some water in it and it is just getting up to room temperature and I would say maybe not the next episode but the episode after that we will be adding our fish to it. Now I've already asked you guys down below what fish you think I should add to this tank. Now I pretty much made up my mind now. Obviously you can see we still don't have the sponge filters on the sponge filters just yet because they are still cycling in the goldfish mega tank. I do think I'm going to get a lid for this tank. I think if the goldfish splash, they're just going to send water all over the walls. So I think I will try and get a sort of acrylic or polycarbonate lid to sit on this tank. But that is it. Just wanted to show you a little update on it that it is full of water. But let's head over back to the goldfish mega tank and talk about these medications. A few moments later. Just before I show you my top five medications, I just want to quickly say the virtual goldfish show is so close to starting. I think we've got around a week before the show launches. That is on the Fancy Goldfish Fanatics Facebook page where you can enter your Ranchu or your Aranda into our virtual show. There will be a post pinned to the top of the group, so keep an eye out for that. It's gonna run for seven days. Then we will have three judges judging your fish. We have first place for Ranchu, first place for Aranda in America, and then first place for Ranchu and first place for Aranda in the UK. And we also will be having a grand champion as well. Now, Jimmy Goldfish, Star Fisheries and Hulk's Goldfish Food have all helped with this competition setup and they are donating lots of prizes for the winners. So if you are one of our viewers from the UK or the USA, make sure to keep an eye out on that. But that is it for the introduction. Let's get to what this video is about and talk about my top five medications. So medication or treatment number one has got to be salt. Now salt is definitely my favorite treatment. Now this is just table salt. I don't actually use this salt with my goldfish. I actually use pure vacuum dried salt, just like this picture here. It's super, super cheap. I think it costs around 20 quid, 16 quid, depending where you get it from, for a 25 kilo sack of it, which will last you a long, long time. Salt has an absolutely great application with goldfish. You can add it to your tank. You can use it as a bath treatment. It is effective against bacterial issues, against weak immune systems, against parasites, and it is also a natural product, so it's not gonna cause any stress damage or any infliction of pain to the fish's kidneys or liver. It's a really nice natural remedy and I always like to use this before I go down a chemical route depending on what the fish has got. If the fish sometimes have stress or they are newly imported, it is quite nice to add a therapeutic level of salt to the system for the first week or two weeks at around three parts per thousand. Now that would also equate to three grams per liter. Then you can really go up. I wouldn't go anywhere up past nine parts per thousand and I would only go to these extreme or more extreme levels if you're dealing with a bad parasite problem potentially or the fish is really really on its last legs and really really needs some help and assistance as it potentially has dropsy or leading to organ failure which leads to dropsy so I wouldn't consider going up that high but I definitely say salt is a great thing to have on hand now I'm not going to go into huge detail on each of these treatments in this video it is really just a quick snapshot to show you what treatments I keep on hand and my favorite treatments to use so that is salt out of the way let's get to number two so number two has got to be fluke solve. Now this is my favorite fluke treatment. You can get other treatments like Kasuri produced fluke M, but I would say fluke solve is definitely my favorite treatment. Now it is more of an expensive treatment. This package here I think costs around 15 pounds, something like that. And this should treat two and a half thousand liters. Yeah, two and a half thousand liters you can see just there. So really good if you have a smaller tank. Obviously a tank this size, it only does about one to one and three quarters worth of the tank volume. But if your fish do have flukes, a great treatment to use. 
and it is not harmful to your biofilter. It's not going to affect the bacteria within your filter. As it is a dewormer, it just kills any worms like the flukes. I believe it might be effective against ankle worms, but I definitely would advise to use a specific ankle worm treatment if you have one and i will have an ankle worm treatment as one of my favorite treatments but not in this top five today so next up is treatment number three now treatment number three is methylene blue you can see that i am holding this package very carefully because this stuff gets everywhere. You can see on the bottom of the packet, it is leaked out and on the lid as well. But this is Methylene Blue made by King British. A really, really cheap treatment. I think this is like six, seven quid, something like this. And this bottle has lasted me a few years and there's still plenty in there. Now, the reason I like Methylene Blue is because it is a really, really effective treatment at treating bacteria. I definitely would not add it to your main system. You could use it in a quarantine system, but I definitely would not add it to your main system because it will kill bacteria and it will kill the bacteria in your filter as well. Obviously, it's great that it kills bacteria, but not if it kills your biofilter, leading to water quality issues. I really like to use methylene blue as a topical treatment onto a sort of wound site potentially alongside iodine which is another of my top five picks today but i definitely like using it as a bath treatment methylene blue really helps to oxygenate the fish it is great to use when transporting fish as well reduces bacteria loads and if you've got a weak fish giving it a 20 to 30 minute bath treatment once a day with methylene blue is a really really good way to give the fish some life get some oxygen back into the system lower any potential parasite issues by using the methylene blue to reduce the mucus levels on the fish as well and then you can use a treatment like um, malachite or formalin which is another of my favorite treatments to use to combat these parasites if your fish potentially have it a great treatment overall and i definitely would recommend using it most likely in a bath treatment. Obviously with all the treatments today, please research them, please look them up before using them yourself. Come to your own conclusion on how and why to use them, but I am just merely giving you my top five picks. So that is Methylene Blue number three, now for number four. So we have gone over the first three treatments. One was for flukes, one was a general treatment, which was salt, and the other was salt for bacteria, which was methylene blue. Now the next one I want to talk about is a topical treatment, and this is iodine. Now I actually have this in the Kasuri anti -back. Hopefully you can see that. This is the Kasuri anti back treatment, which is iodine based. Now I definitely would get hold of some really good quality iodine for your fish because if your fish have any small wounds on them iodine is a great chemical to add to the fish it is really not very strong and it's not going to cause your fish too much harm when you apply it obviously the fish will be stressed if you're removing from them from their environment but simply dabbing off the area with a bit of kitchen roll spraying some iodine on there will definitely help with the healing process now fish regularly bump into things obviously in a tank like this the fish's health is kept at an optimum because i don't have any stones rocks wood for them to bump into but occasionally when they start to spawn and breed they may lose a few scales now if the water quality is kept at an optimum level the tank is kept nice and clean then this should not be an issue but sometimes when the wound is a little bit deeper i do like to use a little bit of iodine probably sprayed on once a day if the fish has a little bit more of a deeper cut make sure the wound is nicely cleaned off with some potentially some rockle wound cleaner or you can potentially dab it off with a little bit of cotton wool or some tissue paper or kitchen roll and then spray some iodine on there now if you don't have a spray bottle you can also use cotton buds just like these ones here now i really really like to use cotton buds hopefully <laughs> i don't think the camera will focus on those but as you can see i have the cotton buds in here these are really easy to pick up from your local like chemist pharmacy or like super drug for example really really good for applying the topical treatments onto your fish obviously keep them in a sterile container make sure they're nice and closed and concealed but that is my fourth favorite treatment a nice topical treatment like iodine 
used in the Kasuri anti-back product here. So that brings us on to the last treatment, which is treatment number five. Now, I currently don't have this treatment in stock because I haven't had to deal with parasites for a long, long time, especially not with the gu these guys. But my last treatment is FMG, otherwise known as formalin and malachite green. You can see an image just here of the NT Labs version. This is a great general parasite treatment for parasites such as Costia, Trichodina, maybe Chilodinella as well. It is a real broad range treatment. Now, obviously I always advocate using a microscope to check your fish before you treat them for parasites. Now I have my microscope right here, as you can see. I think I paid around 100, 110 quid for this microscope and it has lasted me the past eight years. I have it just in a carry case down here. I use the 10 times magnification and the other 10 times. So I'm using a 100 to maybe 125 magnification for parasites when I'm looking them looking for them on my fish now obviously when identifying what parasite or what problems your fish has the first thing you need to look at is water quality check the ammonia the nitrite and the nitrates if you have no ammonia and no nitrite and your tank is already established then it is unlikely going to be a water quality issue. You can also check the oxygen levels. If your tank is quite warm above 26, 25, 26 degrees, make sure you have enough surface agitation. You could do a large water change as well to eliminate that problem. If you're still seeing problems with your fish, the next best thing to do is take a mucus scrape and look at it under the microscope. If you can identify a parasite, then you can treat accordingly. You can use obviously the Fluke M if you have flukes. And for the majority of other other parasites like white spot or trichodina you can use the NT labs formalin and malachite green solution another great treatment to use is acroflavin I do have a bottle of it here as you can see it has spilt out of the bottle but this one is from NT labs I think yeah but this one's from NT labs really good to add to your aquarium obviously it's not in my top five list of treatments but i do like to carry other treatments as well so we've got aquaflavin here for a bacterial issue obviously we do have my favorite methylene blue to use as a bath treatment and obviously if you're measuring out any treatments it's great to use a small set of really accurate scales so i've got these ones here i think i paid seven pounds for them on ebay hopefully you can get a bit of focus on the camera for those but this these are the ones i got from ebay around seven pounds and that is really good for measuring out stuff like your fluke treatment obviously if you're using salt <laughs> not this small amount you want to use some bigger kitchen scales for example now that is my top five treatments also a, another honorable mention is parasin p now this is really really good for lice and anchor worms so i actually purchased the pond version of this because it was so much cheaper than buying the aquarium version now this lasts for nine thousand liters so i've got plenty of this i can dose my tank multiple multiple times if i need to and it wasn't that much more than per purchasing the aquarium similar size treatment as well. So they are my honorable mentions, the Parasin P for anchor worms and lice, Acroflavin or Acroflavin for bacteria. And then obviously it's good to have your microscope and your set of scales as well. But that is my top five treatments that I like to keep on hand for my fancy goldfish. Thank you to one of the subscribers for putting across this video to me and I think hopefully it made a great video for you. Hopefully you guys at home enjoyed it. If you do have any questions, comments or queries, leave a little comment down below. Let me know what treatments you like to have on hand. Obviously it would be nice to have some antibiotics like Canaplex from Seachem or Metroplex as well but I don't believe it is legal to obtain in the UK without a prescription. But that is it for today's video. Hopefully in the coming videos we'll be getting our new fish hopefully for the goldfish mega tank and hopefully for the super simple budget aquarium make sure you're following me on instagram for daily updates videos and pictures thank you all for watching remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping